Every day, we wake up and reach for the same devices. Laptops, phones, tablets, each one running the same familiar systems. Microsoft, Apple, Google. These names are everywhere, quietly powering the digital world most of us live in. They've become so common, we barely notice them. But while the rest of the world leans on these giants, something unexpected is happening in a place that has already rewritten the rules of tech more than once. In the heart of China's tech capital, a major player is making a move that could shake up the global balance. Not just in hardware, but in the very foundation of how devices connect, function, and operate. It's not a headline-grabbing product launch. It's something deeper, more deliberate. And if what's being built there really works, it might not just challenge the status quo, it could start to replace it from the inside out. Back in 2019, Huawei was one of the fastest growing tech companies in the world. Its smartphones were outselling Apple's, its laptops were gaining ground, and it looked like nothing could slow it down. Then came the U.S. sanctions. Practically overnight, Huawei lost access to Google services, key Android updates, and even the chips that powered its devices. It wasn't just a trade dispute. It was a digital blackout. The company wasn't just cut off from Western tools. It was cut off from the ecosystem it had built everything on. That moment forced a decision. Either adapt fast or fade out. So, behind closed doors, Huawei began building something new. Not a replacement for one product or app, but an entirely new foundation. Harmony OS wasn't launched with fanfare. It was designed as a survival strategy, a backup plan in case things got worse. And they did. Fast forward to today, and that backup is now a central pillar. Harmony OS runs on over 800 million devices, according to Huawei's latest report. It powers not just phones and tablets, but TVs, cars, smartwatches, and now full desktop PCs. What began as a fallback has evolved into a high-stakes platform for digital independence. This isn't about beating the West at its own game. It's about creating a separate one. And for Huawei, relying on foreign code is no longer just risky, it's unacceptable. With Harmony OS, the company is no longer patching holes. It's laying bricks for something entirely new, built from the ground up. So what exactly is Harmony OS next, and why does it matter? Unlike most operating systems we know, Windows, Mac OS, Android, Harmony OS Next doesn't rely on US-made code. It doesn't run on Linux. It doesn't support Android apps. And it doesn't connect to Google services. This isn't a skin or a fork. It's a brand new system, designed by Huawei from the core up. At the heart of it is a microkernel architecture, which Huawei claims is more secure and flexible than traditional monolithic systems. According to cybersecurity firm Chihu360, the microkernel has just one thousandth the attack surface of Windows, meaning fewer vulnerabilities for hackers to exploit. That's a big deal in a country focused on data security and self-reliance. But it's not just about security. Harmony OS Next is tightly integrated with Chinese-made chips, like Huawei's Kirin 9006C, which powers the latest Matebook models. On the AI front, it's built to work with the Ascend 910B, a high-performance chip that now runs in over 1,300 Chinese data centers, often as a domestic alternative to NVIDIA's A100. This close hardware-software link allows Huawei to control every layer of the stack, from processor to app, which gives it optimization advantages. Harmony OS Next is built to make full use of local silicon, bypassing the need for Intel, AMD, or Qualcomm support. That also means it can be tailored for China's growing AI needs, especially in areas where U.S. chips are no longer available. What really sets it apart is how deeply Huawei has cut off ties to foreign dependencies. There's no Google Play, no Microsoft compatibility layer, no fallback to Android. Everything, from the file system to the user interface, has been rewritten. Huawei even built its own alternatives to core apps like Docs, Mail, and cloud services. This is more than a technical rebuild. It's a clean digital separation. One that's not just aimed at surviving sanctions, 
but at setting the rules for a new kind of connected ecosystem that Huawei can fully control. So how well does Harmony OS Next actually perform when put to the test? Early benchmarks paint an impressive picture. According to the China Software Testing Center, Huawei's new system boots 32% faster than Windows 11 on equivalent hardware. It also uses about 29% less memory when multitasking, which makes switching between apps feel quicker and smoother, even on mid-range machines. Hands-on reviews from Chinese tech media describe the experience as fast, fluid, and minimal. Transitions are clean, interface animations are crisp, and system responsiveness feels tight. On the surface, it runs like a polished operating system. But once you go beyond the basics, cracks begin to show. The biggest issue is the app ecosystem. As of now, Harmony OS Next supports around 15,000 native desktop apps, and by the end of 2025, they plan to expand that number to 100,000. In comparison, Windows has access to over 660,000, covering every niche from enterprise tools to creative software. Harmony OS lacks native versions of globally essential apps like Zoom, Adobe Photoshop, or even full-featured versions of Microsoft Office. In fact, according to App in China, only 6% of the top 1,000 international desktop apps are available on Huawei's app gallery. That makes a difference, especially for students, creatives, and business users who rely on specific software every day. Huawei has promised that more third-party developers are on board and that many popular Chinese apps will be ported soon, but timelines remain vague. For now, it's a capable but isolated experience. Seamless for those already inside Huawei's ecosystem, but limited for anyone trying to bring in tools from the outside. Still, Harmony OS Next isn't pretending to be a global clone. It's designed for a controlled environment one where the hardware, software, and data all stay within borders. And that's where the real shift begins to take shape. While Huawei builds its own digital foundation, companies in the West are watching with growing concern, some silently, others behind closed doors. Microsoft, once untouchable in the Chinese PC market, is already feeling the pressure. In 2020, Windows had a market share of over 82% in China. As of June 2025, that number had dropped to 79%, according to IDC. And now, with Harmony OS Next arriving on Huawei's new Matebooks, that erosion is picking up speed. Publicly, Microsoft has remained quiet. But behind the scenes, it's making moves. In January 2025, the company opened a new research and development hub in Beijing, focused on adapting its products for the changing Chinese tech landscape. Leaked internal strategy documents, obtained by the information, describe Harmony OS as a sustained threat to OS-level dominance in sovereign markets, especially in state-owned enterprises and public institutions. Microsoft isn't the only one on alert. NVIDIA, though officially blocked from selling its top AI chips to Huawei, confirmed in a recent SEC filing that it is monitoring the expansion of sovereign AI stacks in Asia. That's corporate speak for systems like Harmony OS and Huawei's deep learning framework, MindSpore. Even Amazon's cloud division, AWS, is treading carefully. A senior executive, quoted anonymously by the Wall Street Journal, said, We underestimated how fast China could build a software stack we don't control. As Harmony OS expands, the fear in Silicon Valley isn't just about lost market share. It's about losing influence over what the digital world looks like and who gets to define it. The real power behind Harmony OS Next isn't just in the code, it's in the way everything connects. Huawei isn't building an operating system for just one device. It's building a tightly connected ecosystem where every screen, every sensor, and every chip speaks the same language. Phones, tablets, laptops, smartwatches, even printers and home appliances can now share processing power, memory, and storage across devices in real time. This system is powered by what Huawei calls a super device framework. In practice, it means you can drag a file from your phone to your laptop, edit it on a tablet, and print it from your fridge interface without ever uploading it to the cloud. Everything happens locally, instantly. According to a China Media Group report, 
a one gigabyte PowerPoint file with 100 slides opened in just one second, even with more than a dozen apps running at the same time. So far, more than 230 million devices have been linked using this system, according to Huawei's Q1 2025 report. And this level of integration isn't just a feature, it's a strategy. The more devices you own, the smoother the experience. But it also means you're locked into Huawei's hardware. Without a Huawei phone or tablet, that seamless cross-device magic disappears. For users inside China, where Huawei devices are already common, the system feels complete. But for others, especially those used to open platforms or third-party flexibility, it's a walled garden. A beautiful one, but with only one gatekeeper. This approach shifts the competition from standalone products to full-stack control. Huawei isn't trying to win just on speed or design. It's offering a self-contained digital world, optimized for performance and loyalty. And in a market where trust in foreign tech is eroding, that kind of control is not a limitation. It's leverage. What's happening with Harmony OS isn't just a company pivot. It's part of a larger, government-backed mission. Since 2020, China has been pushing to cut its dependence on foreign technology. This policy, often described under the banner of secure and controllable, is about building a tech stack, from chips to software, that operates entirely within Chinese borders. And Harmony OS fits this goal perfectly. By early 2025, Huawei confirmed that Harmony OS was running on over 800 million devices. That includes phones, tablets, TVs, cars, and now PCs. It's not just consumer tech either. Government offices in Guangdong, Hubei, and Zhejiang provinces have already begun rolling out Harmony OS across their systems. According to China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, public institutions are being directed to fully switch to domestic operating systems by 2027. Huawei is clearly positioned to benefit from that shift. And they're investing heavily to stay ahead. In 2024, Huawei spent around 180 billion yuan, or $25 billion on R&D, focusing heavily on software and chip development. That money isn't going into flashy features. It's being used to build system-level infrastructure, developer tools, chipset compatibility, and AI integration. And in June, CEO Ren Zhengfei confirmed that Huawei expects to invest another $25 billion in R&D this year. What makes this strategy even more significant is its potential to scale beyond China. Countries under U.S. sanctions, or those uneasy with U.S. surveillance, are paying attention. Harmony OS, if proven stable and independent, could become an attractive export. A kind of digital independence package for governments and industries that want modern tools without relying on American platforms. So this isn't just about competing with Windows or Android. It's about redefining who controls the software beneath modern life. Huawei isn't simply following national policy. It's becoming the backbone of it. And as the system spreads across schools, banks, ministries, and military zones, a new kind of digital wall is quietly being built. One where the rules are written in Chinese code. This story goes far beyond Huawei or Microsoft. It's about control over code, over data, over the future. If China succeeds in building a self-contained digital world, one that no longer depends on Silicon Valley, it could shift the balance of global tech power. Not through headlines, but through quiet decisions, millions of devices at a time. And if that model spreads, if others follow, what happens to the digital systems the rest of the world still relies on? The rules of the game are changing. The only question now is, who gets to write them next? If this opened your eyes to what's happening behind the screen, don't forget to like the video, share it with someone curious, and subscribe for more stories shaping the future of tech and power.